24 Integrity Homes, Challenge 1 if you're winning Goldsmith. It's the day after Challenge Wanaka and I was absolutely stoked to take the win yesterday. It was an amazing day out there, I felt great. However, it didn't go quite as smooth as I was hoping. So let's get into the video and I'll tell you all about it. The day before the race, I actually felt pretty awful. Usually we do a bunch of filming where Kira kind of takes us behind the scenes of the day before, but I was feeling that bad that I really just didn't want to be filmed. Uh, we had briefing in the morning and I came back and I just felt wiped, felt really tired. I went out for a jog and felt pretty awful. My legs were pretty stiff and I just felt particularly awful the day before. So I decided just to put my feet up, eat a bunch of food, get a really early bedtime and just chill out as much as I could the day before. I'm usually not someone that gets super nervous, but when you sort of feel that bad, you kind of can only hope and pray then that you'll come right on race day. It just adds another level of uh, the unknown. Racing here at home is something that I absolutely love doing. However, I, for some reason, I'm not sure why it is, but I feel more nervous for a race like 70.3 Topo or Challenge Wanaka, for example, than Ironman World Champs or one of the PTO major events. Uh, I think it's probably because there's a level of expectation at these local New Zealand races. Uh, my friends and family come down to watch me and I sort of like, I wear that on my shoulders. Whereas when I go to one of the major events, I guess there's more of an upside to performing quite well and you're sort of in amongst these great athletes and I guess the pressure is on their shoulders more. Which is something that I'm just gonna have to learn to get used to a lot more, but it definitely racks the nerves a lot. It's race day again. I'd be playing some uh, heavy drum and bass, but we got neighbors today, so I don't want to wake them up at 4 a.m. Had my normal bowl of rice, which I managed to get it all down, which is sometimes I don't manage to eat my whole bowl of rice in the morning. And That's yeah. I finished my bowl this morning. I didn't finish my bowl in Taupo. Not good. Not good. Enough jam. I just don't actually like jam and rice that much. It gives me an extra bit of sugar for the morning, you know? There was no jam because I sent Kira on a very specific mission the day before the race to get me some jam that goes on top of my rice. And it's going to be quite fresh this morning, so yeah, this should be a good race. So, Always special to race here in New Zealand and be the first race of 2024 and hopefully a good year. So yeah, I'm looking forward to kicking it off. Eating my rice. Let's go. Let's go. On race morning, I woke up and I still didn't feel great. I used a power breather device to try and get my lungs working and opened up and I was still feeling awful. Uh, and so yeah, we went down to the race uh, venue to set up the transition and the vibe down there was actually quite mellow, it was quite chilled, it's quite a chilled out vibe which actually chilled me out a lot to be honest with you. So I set up my transition and got everything ready and everything was good to go. I went for my jog, I still felt a bit out of it, a bit sort of like woozy I guess you could say and yeah I just had to keep remain positive, take my caffeine in and just remain positive and just hope that once the gun went off the adrenaline of having a race number on the back and being in a race would get me through, which it did. So the race started and it was a little bit of like a cat and mouse jumpy everyone was sort of i usually like to start on the left hand side so everyone was sort of wanting to start on that left hand side so everyone was moving closer and i just sort of had to wield to mike phillips he's the bigger guy so i didn't want to have too much of a fight with him mike was on my hip and i just had to sort of keep swimming hard but the swimming hard actually felt like 
it was coming quite easy. Some days you have a day where you're pushing really hard, but it's really hard to push hard. And then there's some days where you're pushing hard, but it's easy to push hard. And yesterday was definitely one of those days where it was quite nice to push hard. So I just kept the pressure on, kept the pressure on. And finally I had a pretty nice lead in the swim. I, I think I had about a minute lead out of the water, which was ideal. Um, and yeah, just sort of got to work on the bike really. It was freezing cold in the morning. It was probably less than 10 degrees out at Glendu. So I got on the bike, my legs felt freezing. So the swim's just started. Appears that Carl's got a bit of a lead. I'm in the media car today. The dream team here. We've got Justin in the driver's seat. Got Belinda Granger. Hey. Let's go. I didn't have any time splits for most of the day really, um, but I knew that my power was really good. I was riding at some of my best power that I've done in years. So I knew that for anyone to bridge up to me, they'd have to be doing a really good effort. So yeah, I got through town, through the first 20K and I knew I had sort of a big lead. And it was about 40K where I got my first time split, which was about, I had a, about two minutes on mic. I wasn't sure where the rest of the guys were. And it wasn't until 50k where we did a little out and back section that I could actually see where Mike and the rest of them were. And I had about three minutes on Mike. I think I had about six minutes on Jack at that point. And then we descended down over the red bridge and saw Kira and the crew and got another time split. How's Kyle doing, Belinda? He's cooking with gas, my friend. <laughs> he sure is. 540 on Jack! And then we go over the red bridge and I feel that my something's wrong with my bike and I don't know what it is. And I look down and my chain rings are going like this. And we had about 30k to go. For some reason, probably the bumpy roads of Wanaka or probably more my bad mechanicing skills. <laughs> Uh, my bolt that holds my crank and my chain ring had wiggled itself loose and so I was barely holding on to my crank so One of the technical cars came up and I shouted at them. I was like, I need a mechanic. I had 30K to go. I need a mechanic. Can you get a mechanic? And they said, yep, yeah, one's on the way. And so I was thinking, okay, I'll just have to ride another few kilometers and the mechanic will come up. Give me an eight mil Allen key and I can tighten up my crank bolt to, yeah, so my cranks don't fall off. And then I made it through another 5K and then another 5K and there was no mechanic and then another 5k and there's no mechanic. So I just kept thinking, am I gonna make this? Am I gonna make it off the bike? Is my bike gonna stay in one piece? And thankfully it did. I made it into T2 with myself and my bike in one piece. Heading out onto the run, I didn't know how much time I'd lost to the other athletes on course and we were heading into a really difficult run course in Bike Glendu. So basically it's a 5k run up a mountain it's then obviously a 5k run back down and we do that twice. And I headed out onto the run course quite conservatively but still pushing hard because I didn't know what gap that I had to the other guys. And so I went up the hill, the first 5k, super tough, made it to the top and I decided that I was gonna run the downhill really fast. And it wasn't until I went through 10Ks and started the second lap of the run that I actually saw where Mike and Jack were and I had a pretty good lead over those guys. So I thought if I run the second lap the exact same as I ran the first lap, strong but controlled, just don't blow up, then hopefully I should be okay. Managed to enjoy the 5K run home down the hill, which was uh, super nice and super enjoyable. Last couple of kilometers that I could sort of soak in and it was a very special moment. Great to see all my family and friends out there and I got to enjoy the finish line. lucky enough to have really good feelings as soon as the gun went off and I was ready to fight for every second of it out there. I'd like to thank all of my friends, family and sponsors for all of the support and of course to you guys at home for watching all these videos. I feel like I've got the wind in my sails now so come along for the ride. 
Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Kyle Smith. Hello. Um, during the bicycle ride, you screamed at me quite loud. Yeah. What was that for? Well, I screamed at you so you could hear me, not out of like anything other than that, <laughs> but um, I yeah, needed an Allen key because my cranks were coming loose. Show That's me. That's my own fault. I don't think I tightened them up probably tight enough. Although I did tighten them the day before, but yeah, this is what I rode 30k on that bad boy. So luckily it didn't come off. Do it again? I think it's a... oh, shocking. Yeah. That's not good. Pretty lucky, really. Very yeah, lucky. I used all my nine lives in that one. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> no. Tighten up your bolts, kids.